All right, update on the Nutcracker. Uh, this one's just going to cover pretty much just the two figures that come in the kit. Uh, it's a great starting point when building this kit. Kind of gets you used to the drawings and the uh, kind of gets you used, you know, kind of into the mode of the kit. Uh, and it comes with two figures: the uh, Gustav and the Mez Mezluzin, Melusin, I believe it's pronounced. Um, and you have different configurations now. For example, here they're showing the, the laser cannon on this guy, uh, but on the box you can see where he's holding a weapon. So there's different configurations that you can build these guys in. You can also, like on this guy, you can build it with that hatch open and that little metal, there's a little metal piece on the bottom that opens. So you could have it actually opened and then you have different heads. You could have the pilot in there or you could have what they call the engineer as if he's like working on it, he's just got a hat on, he's inside there doing some adjustments or whatever. So it's, it's pretty neat. Um, now, as you can see, um, you know, that's it. That's, that's the instructions for those two figures. They're both, you know, assemblies are pretty much together. They do share common parts um, to a degree. Uh, but it was quite confusing at first because the first part of it covers building the arms and legs because they are they can be used on either figure but you have a lot of configurations and you have a lot of very similar looking parts um, and I actually kinda got uh, it took me you know the first evening I was still kinda confused of how to go about building this um, because it's all in Japanese I mean there's some English but it's kind of broken, somewhat clear, or English, as some people might call it. Um, but I guess the first thing would be deciding what, how you want to configure these guys before you get started. Because, and what I ended up doing really was, um, because some of these parts are so similar between the left arm, the right arm, this figure, that figure, this this uh, weapon, this weapon, you know, that. I ended up just going ahead. There's so many extra parts on the sprues that I've actually built a couple of lefts, a couple of rights, different built extra kind of things, and just mounted the sub assemblies uh, on tape, you know, as I went along and marked them, you know, left left arm, right arm, uh, because you've got to build the two, the little sub assemblies. These are two pieces each, and there's some more pieces that go along with this, but you you gotta assemble those and you can't once you glue them they're glued so you gotta uh, positioning them is kinda crucial so it was a little tricky uh, needless to say but once I kinda got things assembled and in in the rough assembly and ready to glue together and had choices and kinda could play around with different arms and setups it went pretty quick after that and then the legs are the same um, which is this section down here, you've got your left and right legs. Uh, those are pretty much the same for both figures. Uh, and what's really neat about the, uh, the legs and the feet is that, well let me get the figure out here and show that, is that um, depending on how you configure the guy, his weight is going to be, he's going to be off balance one way or the other. I mean you can have him leaning uh, obviously if he's got his arms out holding a weapon more weight's going to be that way and things like that but the way that these uh, boots are it's basically a socket and the leg has a ball so once you assemble the whole figure you just wait till you get all that done and then you set your feet down put a little glue in the sockets and then set them in there and then you can kind of position him to where you find the good balance point where he's not lean, not on the edge of tipping one way or the other. So it's kind of neat how they how they did that. So regardless of how you build this guy or how the weight is shifted, because there's a lot of you know they're pretty top heavy. Um, when you're assembling them, set them down into his feet. You can you got a little time to sit there and and you can feel it tipping one way or the other, and you kind of find that middle point, and there he is. So you know he doesn't. I mean he he's you can knock him over but he's not gonna just constantly be falling over and uh, this one was a little tricky because he's got the glass uh, you know on the sides and the big front piece so what I ended up doing was uh, once I assembled this guy um, you know I primed inside and or painted inside and there's a, 
a seed and a few pieces which you cannot see at all once it's assembled but you know I glue, I painted that stuff and then you could uh, those pieces were able to be put in through the opening so I glued them and put them in and got them in there then I got his upper torso and head and all done and got him in there then I taped the glass while it was off the model you know and then sanded the edges and then glued it in and then I used um, liquid mask on these uh, side windows and then I just went ahead and did all my painting I actually did a little hairspray on this guy but just very minimal very minimal chipping or anything and unfortunately I really didn't plan to do that so when I did chip the the primer was kind of a lighter gray so it didn't quite look the chipping didn't look that great so as, after I went back and did the orange and stuff like that uh, I went back with the brush and touched up all the chipping with and then kind of tweaked it with a darker kind of a, a, a somewhat rust dark rusty shade and, and cleaned up the chipping a little bit and then did a little bit of just a very tiny bit of weathering on it and a little lightening and the decals and, and all that stuff and then once all that was done I peeled off the masking at the very end but you know a lot of this was just painted as the figure was already assembled uh, because you know you got to glue all these segments of arm together to get it in the right position and stuff like that you're getting glue you're getting you know and it's just as it's being assembled uh, I ended up going back with the brush and painting you know the segments in between the arms and the gloves and I painted the weapon just all brush painted and it was quite relaxing and enjoyable and I had a great time with it really enjoyed it these things are just they're like crack they're they're great um, and I've got the other guy I've got him assembled as well uh, completely assembled and he has the uh, laser laser arm uh, and then I just he's primed in the with the spinal res I primed them both with the spinal res which I love this stuff it's fantastic primer because uh, these have some really fine details in, in them and the Steinle, I, you know, I put it on pretty good and it just sucked right in there didn't obliterate a single detail or anything on it so it's really nice and I'll do the same I probably won't hairspray chip this guy I'll probably just do major mainly like I did on this other one and I kinda just did brush chipping with paint and stuff you know do it that way and I thought of doing him in like maybe a two-toned camo or something like that but the more I thought about it I'm gonna make these guys more or less part of the same team so I'm gonna kinda do him in the same scheme and use the orange highlights and you know decals from the same troop or whatever and uh, kinda make them as a team as part with part of you know uh, and and standing around the nutcracker um, and something else cool is that you do end up with a lot of leftover parts still like I showed you know here's part of a left arm there's hands and arms and torsos and heads and all kind of pieces left over I mean you could do a uh, part of a diorama where one of these things has been blown apart and the guy is laying out there in pieces and just all gory you know or something it's got different heads and stuff you know his head head could be blown off I mean you could really go go gory with it if you want to there's different weapons I could be laying on the ground where it got blown out of him you know his suit was cracked by the nutcracker that's what it does it cracks these these suits and and uh, kills them burns them lasers them or whatever you know anyway it just penetrates the suit and then I guess they probably explode but anyway that's the two figures um, like I said there's a lot of parts left over um, I did fiddle, you know, this is, and I've been just working on this stuff an hour here, an hour there, not been able to, you know, I've been doing more stuff, messing with the machines and, and things that I, uh, than on modeling, but, um, it goes quick. They're quick builds and they're, they're, you can take your time with them and, you know, it, it took me, I, I think one evening I, I assembled this guy and primed him, you know, you know, in a couple hours. You know, once I had built the first one, then this one went pretty easy. Plus, I had already built the legs for him when I built the others and stuff like that. So, once I figured out the instructions and did one, the second one went pretty easy. And uh, that's the two figures that come with it. Now, I did tinker around a little bit with, you know, the first part of the Nutcracker is the turret. 
and uh, it does have some sections that have to be glued in three different sections um, and there's tons of stuff that goes on this I mean I just put a few things on and they do have these poly type uh, pieces that go in one here one here and one here uh, so the weapon can be movable and turnable and stuff like that I guess um, it's sort of a rubbery material um, and then obviously there was a little there's some seam work involved so I did a little of that just the other night I just sat around for about an hour and got this stuff glued in and uh, did a little seam work because this is not a hatch this is actually I, I don't know why they I guess it just has to do with the molding or it could be uh, different on another version or something but on this particular one that's actually blended in and what I used on all that type of stuff and on on the uh, figures mostly was the um, was just some uh, uh, styrene melted glue that I think most all of us have made at one time or another and uh, I use this stuff fairly regular actually and uh, this is a a batch I made not too long ago because I just been the other stuff pretty well hardened up on me but I made it a little different this time and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do something about that when I do one of my what I use videos or something talk about it a little bit but this stuff is great because I mean it's literally I mean that seam there you can barely I mean you can see some of the white but there's no filler. I mean, it's just I glued the pieces in with that. It's very strong. It's just as strong as the glue itself. And let it kind of ooze just a tiny bit. And came back and sanded and all, and it sands just like plastic and blends it right in. Now, once I put some primer on here, I may tweak a little bit. But to be honest, I didn't go too crazy about worrying about the seams because I probably will do the cast iron texturing on this stuff because it definitely looks like it's made from cast iron I don't know if they had cast iron in whatever year 2300 or whatever year these are from but even plate steel would have a texture to it so you know and this is baby butt smooth right now so just to add a lot more weathering interest and something to uh, give it more texture I will probably be texturing this stuff and uh, and masking off some areas and some won't be textured and there will be some seams and I may even add a few welds um, like I said I'm just taking my time on this model it's a little here a little there I haven't spent more than maybe two hours at a time modeling here in the last few weeks but um, I don't seem to get a little bit done so uh, that's where I'm at um, and uh, so the next one will be Probably I, once I start get to texturing, I guess because that's the reason I didn't put a lot together on here. I didn't want to have ten thousand things to have to go around trying to texture, and so that's probably the next thing I'll show is my experiment in texturing cast iron. So, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.